So this morning we are, we're still in our psalm series, right? This is week three of the psalms. Last week we had Psalm 69, and I, for those of you that weren't here, I talked about my full noodle, um, and I talked about how I go on the sailboat and I don't wear a life jacket. Um, last, last, this past Tuesday, we were out, and there was a small craft advisory while we were on the water. Um, I wore a life jacket this past Tuesday, just so you're aware. <laughs> There were several other members of the team that also wore life jackets that night, so it wasn't like I was the only one. But um, we talked about how God is always there and that this, this little thing, right, well, I know this little thing, even though it seems ridiculous, will hold me up. Because what does this weigh? About six ounces? And I'm not even going to tell you what I weigh. Anybody wants to guess after worship, you can come and ask me, and I'll tell you you're wrong. So... <laughs> But this noodle will keep me up in the water. And I believe that. And I trust that. And that's what God says He's going to do for us. And this morning we get Psalm 27. Which is kind of still in that we don't know what's happening. The world around us is is weird. Kind of like the drawings that I showed to the kids. Right? The Escher things. Where they don't make sense. If you look at them long enough. They just kind of like start to make your mind go all wonky. Trying to figure out what's happening in this picture. Things don't make sense. But this morning in our psalm, we hear, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is my stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? So I have to ask you this morning, and this is really, I want to hear it. What are you afraid of? What? Say that again. Society. Society. What about society are you afraid of? I'm only going to go so far with this, trust me. (laughs) What? Leadership. Leadership. The leadership of society. And that could go either way. Um, We, we, and here in our country, we have this system that's supposed to be a two-party system that's supposed to work together, and we know that that neither one of the parties right now are playing well with the other. It's, It's nobody's doing a better job than anybody else. Both of them need to get their acts together. And come together to make this country work the way it's supposed to work. That's the most political thing you'll ever hear me say from right here. What else are you afraid of? Violence. What? Violence. Violence. Okay. Dementia and Alzheimer's. Dementia and Alzheimer's. Yourself or for somebody else? <laughs> <laughs> I knew, I knew Marie could take that. That's why I said that. So. Right? What else? Life. Life? What about life? You're always afraid in life. I'm, you're always afraid in life? Uh, you never know what's going on. But is that a reason to be afraid? Yeah. Why? The unexpected. The unexpected. But, but, but is the unexpected necessarily bad? No. No. Normally, though, when things come unexpectedly, we get so worked up that we get inside of ourselves and we get messed up and we get inside of our heads and we, and we start to think about how things could go and what could happen, right? That's the that's text from Matthew that pairs along with our psalm for this morning, right? Why do you worry about tomorrow? Today has enough concerns for itself. Don't worry about what's going to happen because we need to live in the now. Don't worry about what you're going to wear or what you're going to eat or how you're going to look or what's going to happen because God cares more for you than he does for the sparrows or the lilies or anything else out there. And if he takes so good care of those, why is he not going to take care of you too? What else are you afraid of? You haven't gotten to the answer I'm looking for yet. Loved ones? Losing them. That's a hard one. Sometimes, though, those are steps. See, and I, and I look at it and I try to tell people, I told Doug this past week when he and I had a conversation about his mother passing, that um, he knows fully well that, her mother, that his mother believed in Jesus and clung tightly to him. So he knows that this is not the end, that he's going to see his mother again. Death is not an end into itself. Death is merely a doorway to the next part of our existence. Death is the death of the physical body. Death is not our ultimate death. What else are we afraid of? Money. 
Pain? Change. Change. Ooh. What did you say? Change. Why change? Is change bad? Not always. Change could be, depending upon what kind of change it is. Change can be hurtful. Change can seem like it's the, the end of something that is dearly loved. But that doesn't mean that it's bad. I have a sign in my office, I have actually a postcard, from a uh, ministry concept thing that I got invited to uh, at some point when I was in Texas, um, and I don't even remember what it is, but the back of the postcard was the, was the best thing that I'd seen in a long time, and I actually kept the postcard. It's hanging on my bulletin board in my office, if you've ever been in my office. Um, it says, change is not something we get from a vending machine, or it's not only something we get from a vending machine. Right? Change happens. And if we try to stop it, that makes more problems sometimes than just allowing the change to happen. What else are we afraid of? Where's Bolton? What else are we afraid of? No one wants to mention this. No one wants to mention this, right? What are we afraid of? You can't not talk about it. The checking account balance is five thousand dollars at the end of May. I don't know what it is right now, and Steve's not here. So I can't ask him off the top of his head to give me a rough estimate of where it's at. But the money's going down. And that causes anxiety to rise, right? What do we do in our own households when we don't have enough money to pay the bills? What do we do when it seems like the water's rising around us, right? Psalm 69, the water's rising and for whatever reason my noodle is nowhere to be found. You pray. You pray. And you trust. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is my stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? I told you a little bit about my call story last week when I left Texas. Some of the parts that I left out was the fact that there was a group of people early on in that process when I first started looking for a new call who thought that they knew what was right for that congregation. And because they knew what was right, they were going to make it happen any way that they could. Some of these people had very deep pockets. And some of these people thought that if I don't give to the church, then the church and the pastor are going to cave to me because then they'll have to fall, fold in because they need my money. I can guarantee you that any church out there is not in need of any person's money when they think that way. And that's not, and I, that's not because Bruce is staring at me right now. It's not an easy thing for me to say when our checking account balance is a lot lower than it's ever been. But did you hear what I said? I didn't say that we don't need financial support. I said... If you think that you can control what's happening in any congregation by the way that you give your money, then that congregation doesn't need your support. Because what happened in that congregation in Texas was those people who tried to choke the church out figured out six months into what they were doing that it wasn't having any impact because the people that they thought that they were going to make come running back to them left and started a whole new congregation. And you know today... Six, seven years later, that congregation is a thriving group of people that still meets for worship every week and does community outreach and gives the majority of the money that they raise to people in the community that need it. So when we think that things are at their worst, when the wars are coming up around us, when the walls are rising and when the water is coming up and it looks like nothing's going to happen but our drowning and our death... God is always there. 
The Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is thy stronghold, my life. Of whom shall I fear? There's nothing that we should fear in any of life. Because we know that God is always with us. Remember I said last week that I normally don't wear a life jacket because I trust Bill? <laughs> my trust may be a little misplaced there, I don't know. <laughs> I love Bill dearly. But he doesn't have ultimate control over that boat. But the psalm today tells us, and the gospel today, Jesus tells us, that no matter what happens in our lives, there's no need for us to worry about what's coming tomorrow because God has us in his grip today. God is our strength. God is our stronghold. God is our light. And we know when we're standing in the light and when we're standing in the darkness. That's actually something that I learned on, in my past two months being a part of Footloose. Um, you can actually tell when you're on that stage whether you're in the light or you're in the darkness. It's easy to see and tell whether people can see you or not see you. It's plain as day. And I believe that that's the way it is with God. We know when we're doing what God has called us to do. And we know when we're not doing what God has called us to do. And we can grab hold of the strength and the power and the understanding to know what God is leading us to do and to follow through on that. And to know that we can enter times when we don't know what's happening, when we can't understand what's right in front of us, or the pictures, or the, the red and yellow, whatever they are. We don't understand it. But I guarantee you that God is with you. Because that's what got me through in Texas. That's what gets us through every time. I've talked to Betty several times about things that are happening here over the time that I've been here and Betty always says to me we've been there before and we got through it then we'll get through it now and we'll probably go through it again. That's the way that God works because this place is a place that shares his love and understands what we've been called to do in the world and because of that, God works in and through us. So don't lose faith and don't lose hope. Know that no matter what's coming, that God has already been there and is going to be there to see us through. Know that no matter what comes, that God is our light, that he is our strength, that he is our stronghold, and that we can rest assured in whatever is going to come to us, that he is going to see us through that. So know